I just stepped off of one of Royal Caribbean's newest ships, the Odyssey of the Seas. Now, like many of you guys that trust the brand and love it, we're probably super excited to cruise this ship as well, but I was still trying to figure out what things and activities on the ship are really gonna stand out to me the most. So if any of you guys are sailing on the Odyssey of the Seas soon, you're probably looking up things like, what did the cabins look like? What does the food taste like? And what activities stood out the most? And so this video is seven things I loved that you're gonna enjoy and one thing that I pretty much hate it. And I'm gonna share that with you to kind of save you guys enough time to make sure you have a great vacation without filming overwhelmed with all the activities to do on board. And if you stay all the way to the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you guys a secret that I found or a hint rather that you're gonna be really excited about because when I got the rumor, I was like, you know what? That's gonna be awesome if it's true. So let's jump right into this review. Ahoy sailors, my name is Griff and I want you guys to have an excellent vacation. And an excellent vacation starts off with the cabin. What does the cabin look like? Did I love it? The cabin was really sweet. I'm not gonna lie, one of my favorite cabins. I had two closets. Now, I believe this is one of the first times I've had two closets. I called them closet A and closet B. Closet A is for Alyssa and closet B was for me. And I just love having extra storage to place my suits and my clothes versus Alyssa's clothes. And everything didn't feel all bunched up together like normal cruises. If you've ever been in a cabin, sometimes they're a little tiny and they have to kind of maximize space. This was really cool to have. Now, I'm a larger dude. 6.0, 5.12, wide wingspan. I can't dunk or anything, but I am a little bit larger. So when cabins are a little too small, I feel a little bit claustrophobic. But in this room, I did not feel claustrophobic at all. In fact, this is the most comfortable I felt in a very long time on a cruise. There wasn't any tight spaces or wiggling and wobbling through things. And the shower was pretty big, nice and spacious. The bathroom was, I won't say huge, but definitely wasn't small because I've definitely been in smaller bathrooms. So I like this bathroom a lot. But what I really liked was the way the layout of the cabin was shaped. Now, one of my favorite parts of the room, besides the obvious balcony, because that's just incredible. Look at the views. The thing that stood out the most was the extra storage space and the dresser. Look at this. I was able to put my computer on top of the dresser. And I know what you're thinking, Griff. Uh, I'm not going to bring my computer and camera gear on vacation with me. And I would say you're right. But it's tons of space for other stuff you can put Nice freshly folded towels from the beach. You can place your clothes there, a catch-all. If you want, you can also order room service and place your tray there. I'm just saying there's a lot of space in this room with two closets, lots of storage, lots of room. I think you're gonna love it, cause I loved it. Now, our room was on deck 13, cabin 544. If you wanna check it out, you can, but it's near the solarium and the solarium was super awesome. And speaking of the Solarium, you gotta check out the Solarium Bistro. The Solarium Bistro was absolutely phenomenal. I think it's one of the most underrated experiences at Royal Caribbean. And when I say super underrated, it's a dining experience that you have to have reservations for at dinner, but it's free. And the food is so good. There's Mediterranean food, like freshly grilled salmon, uh, roasted red peppers with pine nuts. They have roasted eggplant, baba ganoush, flatbreads. If you're a fan of goat, they have that. It's so good. It's so delicious that they should charge for it. The dessert is just absolutely phenomenal with baklava and pies. So if you haven't done the Solarium Bistro yet, it's definitely something you're going to want to try. Do not miss out on the Solarium Bistro. The breakfast is phenomenal. They have omelets, donuts, other pastries, fresh bacon, eggs, pretty much everything you'd want with a little more relaxation. There was something really cool sitting with my wife, just having dinner, watching the sunset over the ocean, having a glass of wine. And speaking of wine, that's another one of my favorite experiences, and that's at Giovanni's Wine Bar. I cannot express this enough. You have to try out Giovanni's Wine Bar experience. Particularly, you need to try out the wine pairing. I cannot express this enough. We had the wine pairing, which was absolutely delicious, paired with a pizza and some cheeses, but the port wine paired with the dessert, some chocolates, so, so good. Alyssa and I had a conversation and we pretty much agreed that it was in fact the best port wine we have ever had. Paired with the chocolates made it that much better. Look at this footage, it's so good. You have to try it and please let me know. Come back to this video and let me know if you tried the port wine, the dessert wine, it's, it's insane. Red port wine, oh, so good. But of course they do more than port wines and wine pairings. They have calamari, fresh pizzas, flatbreads that you can order from Giovanni's Italian Kitchen, but you can get a little more of a tapas style uh, wine bar. And we had a wine night and it was absolutely phenomenal. Loved it. 
Now, if you're not into specialty dining, because technically it's specialty dining, you do have to pay for that. The main dining room was exceptional. In our tasting notes, Alyssa wrote down that it was some of the best herb crusted salmon she's ever had from Royal Caribbean. I noted that it was the best beef short ribs I've ever had, period. The mushroom risotto was in fact the best risotto I've had on land or at sea. And I know it sounds like I'm just giving a bunch of compliments and I have, I'm wearing an Odyssey of the Seas hat. I'm wearing a Royal Caribbean shirt but I know what I like. It was really good. It was that delicious. But what stood out the most to me, I can't tell if it was a changed recipe or an elevated ingredient experience with the escargot. The escargot was fluffy, it was buttery, it was silky, and a little bit flaky. You could tell that the butter was broiled at the top, giving it that flaky texture, but it was still mixed with nice meaty escargot. It, so delicious. Paired with fachaya, fachaya bread, I do have difficulties pronouncing words sometimes, but that's here, no there. I'm letting you know, don't skip out on the escargot. And if you've never had escargot before, it is snails, but it tastes like a meteor mushroom and Royal Caribbean nailed it. Now, whatever you do, whatever dinner you end up having, go see the shows. And that's gonna be some of my next things that I love, the show, particularly the effectors. Now, the Effectors is about a superhero team that goes on to fight the bad guys, and they use special talents of auditory, visual effects, and you're going to absolutely love it. It's, it's a show you do not want to miss. It's LED lights, it's awesome music, amazing cast. Don't skip out on it. Another show that I absolutely love was The Book. I would say it's one of the most diverse shows with international music and like drums and musicians and, and they have an aerial acrobats coming from the ceiling. You have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Excellent music. It's another experience that incorporates their $30 million facility with multi-million dollar LED screens. These robots are completely phenomenal. You have to see that show, the book. It's so good. It's so immersive. I love it. But the 270 experience is the behind the scenes show. It's a look at the investments they have made with Royal Caribbean and their studio with 270. And it goes into a little bit of detail of the things they've, they've done to become one of the most entertaining brands at sea. There's a show called Ocean Eyes. And if you've never seen it or never heard of it, it's, it's so good. Um, it's about a water nymph that goes and dives into, I'm not gonna give any spoilers, I'm just gonna stop and say that show is amazing. It's so amazing, it almost won an award. It was competing against, I don't know, a show, you may have never heard of it, uh, The Mandalorian. But to be mentioned in a sentence with cinema, such as like The Mandalorian and other top tier shows, and to be creating entertainment on a cruise ship is absolutely incredible. That's perspective, let that sink in. They're going completely across industries and competing with the top. That's incredible. Now let's just take a breather. Um, I wanna say that I have been doing research on this channel and producing a lot of cruise content for you all. And I found out that we had 231,000 views last month, which thank you everyone who's supporting and watching this channel. But I also found out that 65% of the people viewing this channel also do not subscribe to the channel, unfortunately. And if 65% of the people that subscribed that viewed it last month, we would be at 150,000 extra subscribers, which that would honestly absolutely change my life. And so if you're watching this video now and you're not subscribed, I would kindly ask to please consider, I would invite you to subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button because it would mean the world to me. It really would, and it could change my life overnight. I kid you not. Um, if you like cruise talk, if you like cruise news, and you like cruise reviews such as this one, um, cruise vlogs will be sailing on the wonder of the seas for the inaugural sailing. And if that's something you wanna be a part of, uh, click the notification bell and you'll be notified when new episodes upload, just like this one. That way you'll be informed. And I like to think of it as a win-win scenario. Um, so please consider me as your um, extra cruise guy of content that you'll get on a daily basis. Um, that's my please and thank you in advance. Let's continue on. Now, like I said, there's one thing I didn't really care for. Actually, it's kind of funny and let me explain. The Odyssey of the Seas is one of the most technologically advanced ships I've ever been on. It's incredible, but I have a big problem 
with the elevators. Now, there are some times we're spending like five to 10 minutes waiting on the elevator. And for my friends in the UK, uh, a lift. So you're probably thinking, Griff, is that the big deal? That's not a problem. Waiting on the elevator is like part of the experience. You have to wait on the elevator. And I'd say you're right. I've waited longer for elevators. That's not the problem. I think the problem is unnecessary because of this. The buttons inside of the elevator are touchless, which is super cool, super excellent. And considering the times we're in and the pandemic, being touchless buttons and not having to deal with germs is incredible. It's a great idea. But I think the sensitivity on these buttons are a little too sensitive. There are some times where people would step into the elevator and they would touch multiple buttons on accident. So that means instead of going straight from deck four to deck nine, you'll be stopping on deck four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, it happened on a couple of occasions. Someone got a little too close and touched decks seven through 12. Um, a kid walked in and he touched his button, but he stood next to the buttons and proceeded to touch four through eight. And uh, I brought it up to a couple of my friends. I was like, yeah, we got stuck on the elevator. He goes, yeah, someone hopped into the elevator and accidentally touched like 12 floors. So my suggestion and my feedback would be to maybe an additional sign or just if possible, turn down the sensitivity of it all. But it's definitely a user error that is making things longer than needed. I don't know if they know that, but I figured I'd share that. And so if you're headed to the elevator, just be aware of the buttons. Um, try to touch one, not all of them. Now there is one thing that I said I would share with you guys at the end of this video, my absolute love and something that I care about is great shows with awesome storytelling. But something that I've always wanted to see is continuous storytelling with shows that make you go experience another show on another ship. And turns out while watching the Infectors, again, no spoilers, there was a small hint from Crash, the bad guy, that he'll be back. And that gives me a hint that there might be an Effectors 2. And considering that was the last time they'll be performing on that ship, and they're rumored to be performing on The Wonder of the Seas on our inaugural sailing March 4th, I'm just saying, if there's an Effectors 2, I am going to be so excited. And you heard it here first, or on Matt's Royal Caribbean blog, because that dude knows everything. But if you found any value in this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up button. And as always, if you dig the vibes, please subscribe. And if you care, please share. And we'll see you guys in paradise. Peace.